Well, hello and welcome back. We are continuing working on our little Spring Boot application that is a conversion of an older uh, Apache, Tomcat, Java application, JSP application. This episode, we're going to focus on security. This is pretty cool, pretty quick. Uh, it's one of the nice things that Spring gets us is if we go into our project and we go to Spring, I'm going to add a starter. And if we go look up security, you will find Spring Security. And we're gonna go with that right now. They've got some other things. We're gonna go with just the basic out of the box Spring Security. And so when we do that, it's going to add to our POM file. If we go look, it's basically just gonna bring in the Spring Boot Starter Security. And that's gonna wire a couple of nice things up for us. So then, what we need to do is we're basically just going to tell it what to do uh, as far as what the login looks like. So to do this, uh, we're going to grab a, we're going to create a web security config, and it's going to extend the WS configure adapter that's sitting out in the Spring frame framework. Uh, if you find an older example, it'll probably be uh, it was web security uh, configure configure or adapter not easy to say uh, they just change it so they've shortened that name a little bit and there's a couple of things that they simplified uh, when you do the extend there's a few things that were required before so they now make it super simple all we have to do is we're going to come in we're going to auto wire our data source as we've seen before so it's going to fire that thing up it's going to connect to our database and then we basically need to tell config authentication what to do now in our case our key uh, fields are the username, PWD, and we've got verified. Uh, it could be, uh, and we're gonna call it as enabled because we're basically just gonna work with their stuff that is looking for a username, a password, and then are they active, enabled, something along those lines. And what we're gonna do here is uh, this little combo of things says, hey, how do I get my username, password, and whether or not they're active from the user table based on the username? So it's basically like a login. So what you might do is you could have, a, let's say, login in the word password, maybe how you uh, have your table set up. In this case, we are just using, if we go look over here, we're just using this guy. So we've just got this, our password is encrypted. So we're going to need to be able to do that. And it's through the uh, crypt password encoder. We'll look at that a little bit different. We're going to separately do a, um, a registration page. that's essentially going to set up our user. We'll look at getting that set up at that time. Uh, at this point, you can take an encrypted password, uh, this, which is what we did. Uh, I'm just taking an old uh, set of users and they're sitting in a table. So I'm just pointing to that table and saying, hey, I want to grab my username and password based on username equals, whoops, name equal to whatever it is. So like if I do, uh, let's do tester. So if I come in here and I do username, password, verified where username equals tester, then it's just gonna give me this. So it gives you the username, password, very simple, because it's gonna compare those. And it's also gonna look for roles uh, the key roles that we have, uh, let's see if I go back and just select all of them, is either, whoop, oh, I don't even have those set up here. So they really don't matter too much, but user is going to be something like user admin, uh, like, you know, user standard or user default or admin user or something along those lines. Uh, staff user, you can do whatever you want because basically it's just going to be bringing in those roles related to that username. And we'll talk more about that in a, at a future point, um, maybe. I'm not even sure we're going to get into it with this application because really what we're looking for here is username and password. And I think we could actually get rid of that. Let's see what happens. If I get rid of just that, and this is it. It's just this one thing along with the uh, Spring Boot uh, starter pack, basically, is it's gonna say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna incorporate some security. So if I do it here, so make sure it comes up and it's not asking for that extra piece. Uh, oh, I already had one in my mistake. 
Uh, let's see if I'll be able to do this. I think I've already got one running, so I may have to bring it down. Okay, and so now I've got it running. And what this gives us is now, I've got to log in, but what I'm gonna do here is if I try to come into the base, it says, hey, you're not logged in. And so now I'm gonna log in. And so if I give it a username and a password, and this is a default login screen. If I sign in, uh, and then here it's complaining that I don't have my authorities. So this says that I do need this because it's expecting the authorities. So if I take that, even though I'm not gonna use it, uh, let's see, let's see what happens here. Okay, uh, let me make sure that is correct. So that's my roles. Let's go look at uh, user. I think I do have roles in here. Oh, this one doesn't even have that. So if I do this, oh, there we go. Okay, so I have a role user and a role admin. And I think if I get rid of those, I think I need role user or role admin to work. So, whoops. If I go, sorry, let me do this. I think it's going to complain about that. And that's probably when you've got stuff. Oops. Okay, good. It didn't do that. So if I reboot, pull it. There we go. Now let's see what happens if I log in. Oh, I have to probably restart the server because it's still going to complain about the same thing there. Okay. Yeah, so I need a textual representation, which means I need to go back to... User role oh. role user role admin and assuming those are all good now let's see what it's going to say so doing that now. I have now logged in. So it has given me a login. And uh, if you remember anything about it, so I'm back on my homepage, but now it's going to require me to log in to get to my homepage. And it also has given me a slash logout. So if I do logout, it's going to log me out. And then it just comes in and it says, hey, all right, do you want to get logged back in? Yes, I do. Bam. So I can actually, so if I just went to, slash log out that's actually going to say hey you sure you want to log out it's going to confirm it and boom so all of that that log out that login all is built in this is all part of what it gives you uh, as you may have seen you you get all of this but you get just this default look and field uh, let's see what it complained about here oh that was just the granted textual authority um, we'll get a little more complicated we'll talk a little bit more about roles and stuff like that. I don't know that we're going to need them in our application, so we'll have to have a couple or examples that we'll push. But this one, and you can find this just about anywhere. Um, I just created, to put this file in there, all I've got is I've got a config package off of my main. If you remember, it was com.rbsns.demo. I created the config package. I put websecurityconfig.java in there super simple code that goes into it as far as it's like really it's one of those the easiest way to do it is just copy and paste and in doing so now that i've got all of those pieces up i have my palm file pick it up uh, it knows to go look for this and i am off and running i don't have anything else i have to worry about if i look at my controller there we go um I don't have in here any login or anything like that. I didn't have to add a login, didn't have to add a log out. It takes care of all of that stuff for me. Now we do have opportunities to be able to uh, extend that and we will look at that another time. Uh, right now though, I figure it's a good time to just give us a, hey, if you wanna get your Spring Boot application set up with a login, you don't need too much. You just need to make sure that you have a, uh, a table for your user or tables depending on how you want to do it where you're going to have username oh, username password 
verified, basically. Are they enabled or not? So are they active or not? And then you need to be able to grab a role for that user. That's it, one role. Uh, we will get into the details of that security at another point, but there you go. So you are all set. You now have a, if you're working, following along, you now have a nice little login that you can use. So now you have secured your application. And we'll look at some of the things. There are definitely some tags that are available. Uh, if you look for, and I forget the exact one, uh, if you want to look for like your current user, it is, there is a nice little time leaf that is right. Uh, where did it go? We do have a way to say, oh, here we go. So I could do this is I can grab this and get the uh, remote user. So if I wanted to do that, I can go change my home page and say, uh, let's see, let's put that right underneath this thing. And we're just gonna do it like this. We're just gonna say, welcome. And so if we do that, and we log in, we're gonna be able to see our name here in a second because that is yeah remote user, which is their username. Uh, where did that go? So I'm gonna log out, I'm gonna log in. And there's more that we're gonna be, whoop. I guess I need to learn how to log in properly, type my password correctly. Ooh, there we go. I have no explicit mapping for error. So I think it just picked that up and didn't like it. Where did it go? Well, and looking into that, um, we're going to actually push that onto another episode because I want to get a little deeper into displaying user properties. So we'll come back around to that for now. Uh, we will just wrap this one up. Note, not a whole lot you have to do to get that login and log out done. And once you've got that, then there's, like everything else, ways that we can extend it, customize it, and make it our own. So we'll start building that in, uh, what much as we had before, where we had our nice little login form. We're going to go build that into our uh, homepage so we don't have to actually log in anymore. We're going to tweak that, and uh, we'll come back that around. We're just going to keep on knocking these things out. So if you have any questions, shoot an email at info at developmentor.com. Otherwise, go out there and have yourself, or... Even if you do, go out there and have yourself a great day, great week, and we will talk to you next time. Well, hello, this is Rob with Developanur, also known as Building Better Developers. Wanted to announce that we have school.developanur.com. Feel free to check it out if you like any of this information, any of the content that we've sent and you would like to see more. You can come out, you can enroll for free. We have free courses. We've got places for you to get better at just learning a technology or how to's. You can work on your business skills. We can help you with becoming a better developer as in coding and things like that. A lot of the stuff you've seen on YouTube, we also have out at school.developanur. We just have it in a little more of a uh, educational format and a way for you to track your progress as you move forward becoming a better developer.